Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the autopilot order of operations for small general aviation planes. Now this is kind of an interesting video because it's one of those things that um, real world experience versus flight sim experience is starting to kind of run into me just a little bit here. And it's kind of changed the way that I look at things just a little bit. And I'll kind of share a little bit of what I mean by that. So we're in the Cessna 172 here. We've just taken off from uh, Plymouth Municipal Airport, which by the way, I believe the FBO is right there. Is there where we're kind of ripping across? Yep, that's where the parking lot is. There's actually a really neat little restaurant right in that building for those of you who are into kind of like, you know, diner food and stuff like that. But that's not the point of the video. We're interested in the uh, automatic pilot here. So when you're dealing with small general aviation airport pilots, a plane, not airport pilots, airplanes, there we go. Uh, your autopilot is generally going to be some combination of a two axis, which would typically be your roll, which is going to be your left, right. And of course your pitch, which is going to be up and down as well. And knowing when to use kind of what setting as well as kind of how to what order of operations to operate it in can be helpful uh, when you're trying to debug things or trying to work it out. Uh, one thing I will say too is in the real world versus in the flight sim, autopilots have a wide variety of different quality. In the flight sim, the autopilots tend to be pretty aggressive, but they tend to be a little twitchy. In the real world, they tend to be less aggressive but they also tend to be vastly less twitchy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get this aircraft nice and on course here. I've got a little bit of turbulence, but uh, welcome to this part of the country. So just give it just a teeny tiny bit. So now let's get the aircraft all set up. The first thing with autopilots, and I think this is a very, very true, and this again comes from, come to the sim too long here, is a lot of people tend to race over to the autopilot and tap it the first chance they get without getting the aircraft all ready to rock. Some autopilots, especially those that are based on grabbing onto the controls and moving them versus the trim-based autopilots, will actually not tolerate that and they will pop off. So for example, if I were to immediately hit the altitude hold button and autopilot on in a real plane, this plane would go beep and immediately kick me off of the autopilot because I'm pitched up too high to be able to safely engage it. So the first thing we need to think about is how to engage that automatic pilot. So what we do typically is you're always going to be working from the power button for the autopilot away. So in this particular aircraft, our power button right here is right here. And you'll notice all of my roll modes are first. You'll notice all of my pitch modes are located on the far side. Let's go ahead and make sure we're flying the aircraft safely here. Uh, what do they call it? Recovery from unusual attitudes, I believe is the expression. <laughs> nice. So what we're going to do is uh, whenever we're ready to engage the autopilot is we're going to get the aircraft as close as we can to the correct everything before we touch the automatic pilot. Again, in the real world, a lot of autopilots will not engage, especially navigation modes, unless we're close enough to the thing we want to navigate to. So in this particular case, you'll notice I've got myself my magenta line of safety. You notice my CDI is set over to GPS mode. So now we're going to be able to engage this without too much concern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by making sure the aircraft is ready to go. So I'm going to get it all nice and pitched. I have no strong forces on it one way or the other. I've got my speeds exactly the way I want to do it. Now I'm going to engage the autopilot first. Now what you're going to notice is the roll light is what's going to come on by default. And you're also going to notice the VS, meaning vertical speed. Again, different autopilots are going to have different modes. But as a general rule, the moment you hit the autopilot button, you're going to engage the system to hold on to where you are now. So what I can do is I can pitch the plane, press autopilot, and let go. And now the plane is doing the same thing it just was. So now what we're going to do is we're going to engage our roll mode first. We have heading and we have nav mode. In a lot of old school autopilots, it's actually very, very difficult to get the nav mode to smoothly engage, or it'll be too aggressive. So a lot of times what we'll do is we'll actually activate the heading hold mode, which will take whatever your heading bug is selected at currently, and it'll attempt to fly towards that. Notice we're getting very dangerously close to a pitch and a stall here. Let's see if it's going to engage and pop out. Nope, we're just going to kind of sit in the tail, and it should pop off of autopilot here. Nope, not going to pop off of autopilot. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> So one of the things I wanted to do, and hopefully everybody picked up on that, was show that as we're sitting there fiddling with the knobs, the aircraft kept doing what we were doing with it, even though it was dangerous, which again is reinforcing how critical it is for you as a pilot to remember it will not do everything. It'll only do what you set it for. So let's put this thing down to a little bit better of a pitch and re-engage and do the exact same process. Start by hitting heading, and we're going to swing back to our heading. In this case, I'm satisfied with our heading. It's going to intercept our course. I'm going to select the navigation hold mode. In the real plane, uh, when you do that, this thing tends to go all over the place. That's a technical term, by the way. And now we can go ahead and start thinking about what we're going to do for our pitch modes. There are several different pitch modes. And again, we always want to do our lateral before we do our pitch. In this case, our pitch mode is basically just go up. It says vertical speed. If we wanted to, we could actually come in here and we could define a set vertical speed. So for example, if I pop this up to 500 feet per minute, you'll notice the aircraft will automatically attempt to pitch for 500 per minute. So what we've done is we've assigned it what we'd like it to do and it's starting to do that for us. Now, if we wanted it to hold our altitude, we could just come over here and press the altitude button. So let's say for some reason we want to do 3,000, 3,100 feet there, boop, just like that. And now we have engaged our pitch mode. 
So now that we've got both of those settings gone, the plane is now under control of the automatic pilot in two different axes right now. The first one being our lateral, our left right, in this case is going to be a navigation hold mode. And then of course in pitch, where it's going to attempt to hold the same pressure altitude. Now that's the general gist, and that's the general order of operations, is always left to right. Now notice where things get a little interesting is when we're on an approach to landing. Here's where things are going to be a little bit different. Uh, generally what we do is we engage different components of the autopilot independent of each other depending on what phase of the actual approach it is. Now keep in mind it's possible once you've kind of programmed everything in to literally just mangle the approach button and kind of get that goodness going down to the ground. Uh, that's perfectly fine, but generally when we're going to be flying these kinds of approaches we want to split it into multiple different modes depending kind of on what we're trying to achieve here sort of thing like that. So what we have right now as you can see we're sneaking up on this approach. The aircraft is now pitching to align ourselves up with the final approach course here for our landing. Uh, the reason it's doing that, of course, is because right now we're actually in navigation mode and we're also on altitude hold mode. So right now the GPS is providing us with all the critical navigation information that we need. We're actually not getting anything as far as uh, what we need for information for landing. Now one of the things I did a moment ago is inside of my ILS here, my VOR radio, I've actually put in the ILS frequency for this position. So one of the challenges to engaging an ILS, especially when you're going to be flying an approach like this, is you have to be able to switch CDI modes and then grab onto it. Now, one of the things that makes it super challenging, if you actually watch my little handy dandy needle here, is you can see that as we start to progress and get closer to the ground or closer to that approach, we need to be able to manage that transition. So one of the things that we can do, which works really, really well, is we can actually lock the particular position of the plane. We can disengage the nav mode, which activates roll, switch our CDI to the ILS frequency, and then what we can do is actually engage our approach hold. Now, one of the things that's so cool about most GPSs is when we do something like that, you'll notice we have a couple new modes. We're still in altitude, but you notice that my glide slope is now armed. You always have to approach glide slopes for any approach from underneath. So in this particular case, it's armed, and we have approach as my roll mode selected. Now what's going to happen is this aircraft is going to approach where the uh, ILS is going to pick up. This is going to be the localizer in this particular case. And you're actually going to watch this needle start shifting towards the center, and then the autopilot will catch it, and it will start going ahead and bring us down to the ground. As you can see, it's starting to center, but since we've already selected the approach, we're actually going to begin that part. Now, one of the things that makes this particular uh, function very, very handy, and this again is another one of those kind of real world pieces, is you can actually switch to navigation mode, and the aircraft will still fly most of the approach. Because remember, nav mode is our selected mode for lateral navigation. In this case, we're using the ILS as localizer in order to go ahead and navigate ourselves across the ground here. Where this is going to get a little interesting, however, is you'll probably know notice that as we get a little closer, when the glide slope kicks in, we need to make sure that our approach is set properly. Otherwise, you're going to get a little bit of shenanigans here. We're basically going to get stuck. So I can go back to approach mode now because I've already captured this course here. And now it's just a matter of getting a little bit closer to the ground. One, two, three. I'll go ahead and speed up time here. Again, we're nice and thoroughly well under the uh, glide slope here. Go ahead now. One, two, three. It should grab it in about two seconds here. Not even. One, two, and it's got to grab it right now. And this looks like it's going to snap onto it. It looks pretty good. So there's glide slope mode. I'll go ahead and reduce power. Of course, in the real plane, this is when you drop your first notch of flaps and get ready for a landing. But you can see exactly what happened. Now, one of the things that, again, this is a cool little example here, is at any point, if I wanted to, I could take my heading bug here. I could line it up with the direction of the runway, and I could actually tell the aircraft to level off. I could press ALT, and I could press NAV, and now the aircraft would actually level off at this position and use the runway as its reference point for navigation, which makes it really easy to go around. Now, where this gets dangerous, though, is if I press my approach mode again to continue my approach, I have to make sure that my glide slope hasn't gotten so low that it won't actually capture the glide slope anymore. But again, it's just kind of that little, little thing that you can use for those kind of situations. So hopefully this video is helpful. As always, like I said, just some quick little tips. Quick, short version, always work away from wherever the power button is. Generally, it's AP to turn the thing on, then go ahead and select all your modes moving away. Also, make sure that whatever mode you're in makes sense. A uh, common mistake is people will try to uh, activate a mode that they don't need. Another thing I always like to tell people too is fly the plane, then have the autopilot hold the wheel. Don't try to use the autopilot to grab or get yourself out of a bad situation. Uh, some military aircraft have an auto recovery feature. Most civilian aircraft, or general aviation especially, are not going to have something like that. Other than that, enjoy.